Another good thing about having a confession, like Westminster's confession of a creed in church, is that it, it also holds the office to be of the high standard, you know, um, so that so that people can only hold the pastor's office or the elder's office and exercise authority only as long as they maintain the doctrines contained the Westminster's Confession. No evangelicals can believe for a moment that the church, uh, the church should leave you to a circum to circumstances to decide whether her people will be taught that Christ rose from the dead, or he died of sins, or he's the son of God, or he will come again. No, no church will question that. However, if you're not careful, false teachings will come on our ways and question whether Jesus actually died on the cross and that kind of nonsense. So we need the creed to give us the uh, the substance to defend it. Most of the time, Christians know that Christ rose from the dead, and of course. But what Christians sometimes don't know a lot of times is how to defend it. You know, we're really living in a very hostile world. And unless we learn how to defend it, know our stand, know who we are, know, know who our God is, and be able to verbalize it and communicate that, we won't be very good witness in this world. And 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 the worst thing is we, we could be shipwrecked ourselves. All right, so this is really important. And, and uh, the church must have assurance, every assurance that the doctrines are not denied by clearly emphatically proclaimed by her appointed leaders. The, the standard, the confession, the creed also helps and protects the preacher from being accused by the other side of the doctrinal spectrum, like the hyper-orthodox uh, him uh, that, that that violates the right teaching by modernistic ties. So pastor sometimes don't have much authority either because you are washed over by the congregation who vote for you to continue to be pastors. And and, uh, and also the elders, you know, watch over you. So the pastors need to be protected and said, and uh, and also the, 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 the creed gives the pastor protection, the confession, you know, uh, so that the, the minister has the freedom to minister the word of God. He declares the world, the church, uh, and that this man is expected and bound to preach these doctrines. Okay. It makes clear that this uh, this is his calling, his duty. And also declares that this is the only doctrines he must maintain. On, on all other uh, questions, he, he has liberty and expression. For example, on justification alone, uh, and and the unconditional election and such like this is fully committed, but on premillennialism and supralapsarianism and cremation and capital market punishment and common market, he's not bound. See that in this in this area, his confession of faith is his magna carta. That's really important. The, the confession of faith or the creed or the Westminster's confession is his magna carta. What is that? That means. Uh, it's historically this is agreement uh, between the king and and also the um, the Congress or the Parliament that time to make sure that there's no abuse of power and that is set is our Magna Carta. So the pastor delineates the whole of his theological commitment and equally the whole of his freedom. So it protects the pastor, protects the church, and holds the church accountable. Holds the standard, high standard of the pastors and uh, deal with these false teachings. That's what a confession, uh, that, that's why this is very, very powerful. This, uh, this, this standard of uh, creed and confession is so powerful and important.